Hey guys, it's Thursday and I am heading out to prune some forsythia bushes on my property and what I'm gonna do with them is try to get them to root. Um, I'm actually gonna take the clippings and I'm gonna try to get them to root so that I can plant more forsythia bushes and so I can bring in some of the clippings and have some spring blooms in my house as the weather continues to warm up. And I thought I would take you along with me today so you can see what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and maybe what kind of results you'll get from it. I don't know. Um, anyway, so I've walked to the back of my property. Sorry, I am outside, so the lighting's really weird. I <laughs> changed it just for a second. Anyway, this is an old building that was on our property when we bought this place. And we keep a bunch of extra gardening stuff. Like you can see, we've got extra pavers over here. I've got a bunch of pots for, you know, gardening and containers for more plants and things like that. And anyway, we keep wood stacked on one side of this thing and we keep, eventually the plan is to keep our gardening tools and things in here, kind of like a, like a, just a little shed for that kind of purpose. We gotta clean up a little bit more around the sides. We did a little bit of cleaning up last year, but I would like to get gravel down on the floor and get some shelving and things up in there and some stuff on the wall that will hold some of the tools anyway. That, I don't know if that'll happen this year. We have a lot of projects to finish up from last year. We have some new projects for this year. I'm not sure if this will get done or not. But anyway, right now we just kind of use this area back here as um, a storage area for gardening stuff. So I'm gonna grab one of my five gallon buckets that I keep back here and I'm gonna put my clippings in that when I cut them on the forsythia bush. And I've got my pruning shears. Um, you shouldn't need anything bigger than this because forsythia bushes are not very thick. So you shouldn't need like the big pruning shears. This should be enough. Anyway, uh, we'll head to the back of our property in just a second and I'll show you the bush and what it looks like right now. Kind of like late winter, early spring. Okay, so here we are on the back of our property and I'm sorry if you can't hear me very well because the wind is blowing and we are next to the road and there are cars driving by. Um, we have this big old Norway spruce hedge that borders the road in our property. We actually have a couple trees right here that have died and need to be replaced. Anyway, right here I have one forsythia bush right there and then this is a locust tree that has grown up. We'll probably pull that out. That should not be there and we have a bunch of rocks and things around here where we had the property um, worked on for a pond last year that needs cleaned up. Anyway, I'm gonna take you in and show you this bush. You can see that it's starting to bud. See all the little buds? Okay, forsythia is kind of bumpy. It's a little bit like elderberry um, it has like the little warty filling bumps on them, on the, on the bark. Okay, so what we're gonna do when we prune, you can actually be quite aggressive when you prune because it's just gonna push more growth out this spring. So we can actually cut quite a bit back. Um, I'm gonna go in probably to the back, way back over here and cut that back because it's kind of getting close to that tree line and I would like to clip it back so it's not so far into that hedge. And basically I'll show you right here what I'm gonna do. So you can see there's this stem right here and we have new growth coming out of it and it goes all the way back down here. I'm probably gonna go almost all the way to this original stem here and clip it at an angle um, kind of diagonally so that water runs off of it and there's less chance of this getting infected when you clip it at an angle. So this would be a really good cutting to use and take inside and you'll get blooms all over here, here, and off of all of these pieces that are coming up off of the
looking at this forsythia branch and um, like I said, it has bumpy bark on the outside, very similarly to an elderberry bush or an elder bush. And it actually has the same sort of inner core as an elderberry as well, where it has like a hole in the middle and it's really soft right there. People used to take elderberry stems and they would cut them and drill holes in them and make flutes out of them because they were hollow in the middle. And this is kind of similar. I would be curious, I don't know this, if you do know this, um, comment and let me know if forsythia and elderberry are in the same plant family because they do have a little bit of the similar characteristics. And I know that forsythia <coughs> is traditionally used for antiviral purposes and so is elderberry. Um, so, kind of interesting. All right, so I think I have a good bit here especially for bringing the plant indoors and letting it flower and bringing in some early spring color. Um, this one will be yellow, but I actually have a lot more growing back here than I thought that I did. So I may clip back some more and I'll have a good bit more to make a hedge somewhere wherever I feel like I need some yellow. Okay, so um, on our property, we have some curly willow trees. We have a couple of these they do really well next to water. They're similar to a weeping willow, but they their branches are kind of curvy looking, hence the name curly willow. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. If, I'll show you later um, the upper branches so you can see how they twist and turn. Anyway, someone told me in a Facebook group, in a foraging group, that if you ever take plant clippings and you want them to root in water or in um, like potting mix or some sort of sandy loamy soil, that if you don't have the rooting hormone powder, you can use willow or cotton wood trees and you can just clip the branches and stick those in with the other uh, plants that you're trying to get to root because the original rooting hormone came from willows and I guess cotton wood. I don't know what chemical is in the plant that causes it to do that. Um, but they said if you don't have the powder, oh, sorry, wind's blowing my hair and it is a mess. If you don't have the powder, this will work. So I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna cut two or three branches, just little tiny twigs off of this tree, and I'm gonna stick it in the water with my forsythia clippings, and I'm gonna see if it helps it to root or not. And I actually may do one with and one without just to kind of see if the one that has these clippings is faster or has stronger, bigger roots, we'll see. Anyway. I figure that that will help to be in there with the plants while they sit in the water and I have them in my house. And then when they have good, um, like a decent root system, I will bring them out and plant them outside wherever I decide I wanna put my forsythia hedge. So let's get started. Okay, so real quick, this is the upper part of the branches of the curly willow and you can see how they kind of twist as they go up. The whole tree kind of has like a twisty pattern to the trunks and all the little branches twist as well. Now this tree is filled with a wild rose bush, just curling and climbing all through this tree. So I'm gonna be careful and not get stabbed by that and try to get some branches off of here. Okay, so that didn't work because the rose bush is all over the bottom and I cannot reach any of the branches without getting tangled in a rose bush and it's not worth it. So I am gonna go inside and I'm gonna get out a couple of vases. I'm gonna trim these down a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see them, really tall. I'm gonna trim some down and stick them in the vase with water. I'll change the water once every week or two when it gets dirty looking and we'll see if they take root. you what I'm doing here. This is really long. It's almost too long for these vases, but sometimes it's nice to have like really long pieces sticking up in a vase that you have a bunch of branches in. So I'm going to leave some of them. And if you hear a bird running into my window, there's actually a cardinal who's been doing this for over a week. He's crazy with hormones and he keeps attacking the windows around the house because he sees himself. And apparently he thinks he's defending off 
another bird and you can see my cat. Can you see my cat? She is having a blast with this bird at the window. She thinks she's hunting. This is as close as she gets to hunting through the window. Anyway, if you hear him, that is what he's doing. Okay. I'm gonna cut these lower branches off. Perfect. Maybe I will leave all of these really long. It may look good on the mantle. This one's kind of short. Oh. Did you get him, Coopsy? Oh. She's going crazy with that bird. Okay, so this is all I'm gonna put in this vase. You can see it's kind of scraggly looking. And I'm gonna fill it with water, probably one third of the way full. I'm actually, since I wasn't able to harvest any um, willow branches, I think I'm gonna put some dried willow bark down in the bottom and then fill it with water and maybe it'll have the same effect. Um, hopefully that chemical stays in the bark even after it's dried and it's not just in the fresh bark. So we'll see, I'm gonna do that. Um, fill this a third full and then I'm gonna stick this on my mantle. I'll show you guys in just a second and in as spring progresses, these little buds should start blooming and this should bloom out all pretty with yellow forsythia flowers. So it's a nice way to prune back your existing forsythia, um, bring in some color for spring um, and actually get yourself a lot of starts for more forsythia bushes if you want them or you can even gift them to friends if you wanna do that later in the season. Okay, so now that I have all of the branches in their jars, I have some white willow bark here that I use to make tinctures and sometimes teas, usually tinctures, but I'm gonna put a little bit of this um, in the bottom of each of these jars, probably a tablespoon in the larger vases and probably like a teaspoon to a half of a teaspoon in this one. Okay, so about a third of the way full of water, willow bark in here branches in the air and we'll see if we get some roots down here. Okay, you can see I put the jar with the smaller clippings back here. This is in our kitchen windowsill and I have a bunch of plants here and if I'm trying to propagate any plants in water, this is where I put them. This window gets about, mm, I guess, medium light right here. And I always have a lot of success propagating plants right there. The next place I put branches is right here in our family room window. Um, this room also gets about medium light right here. So we'll see how they do in this spot. And then the last place I put the branches is here on my mantle. And this is our sitting room and it gets low to medium light. Hi, Zay. Hello. <laughs> it gets low to medium light, so we'll see how they do right here. You can also see that the water is already starting to turn brown and that's where it's extracting the color from the willow bark that I put in there. Okay, so thank you guys for coming along with me today. Fingers crossed that this works and we have beautiful yellow blooms on all of these branches and we have a really good root system so we can plant them outside um, when I'm done enjoying them in my house for early spring. All right, I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I will do a little bit more research on some of this stuff for myself. And if you guys ask questions, I'll look that stuff up as well and we'll all learn together. All right, I hope you guys have a good day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.